Hey everyone, Cole here with trainwithcole.com. It's on for another uh, YouTube video. This is a follow-up to my last video where I talked about um, uh, dieting with uh, the goal, of course, in mind being more lean, um, but following a higher fat dieting approach. And so what I want to talk about today is how to go about setting up a diet um, that is moderate to high fat, moderate protein, and then low carbohydrate. And again, the reason um, that I like this kind of dieting style is for the regular person who say they want to lose 10, 15, 30 pounds or so. Um, I find that it's fairly effective for um, fat and weight loss. People see results fairly quickly. Um, it is very sustainable. Um, it's satiating, meaning it keeps us feeling full and we still have some palatable tasting foods. I also find that people generally feel better because they have more stable blood sugar levels throughout their day. They don't have so many spikes and drops in blood sugar uh, because of spikes and drops in insulin because of the types of food that we're eating. Um, or at least not to the same degree. Uh, those spikes aren't to the same degree as if we were eating a lot of carbohydrate-based foods. Um, and I just think it's also um, just a healthier in the sense of just well-being in terms of how people feel just good. They still have good performance energy in the gym. Um, it's sustainable. Uh, it's not overly cumbersome. Uh, and it's something that you can implement really any time on the road at restaurants, uh, it's pretty easy to fit uh, just in your regular lifestyle and schedule. So um, the first step to do, uh, like setting up any diet, is to determine your uh, total daily energy expenditure, your TDEE. Tons of calculators online you can use. Just do a Google search. You can plug in some information that will give you out an approximate. I think um, uh, that's a good place to start uh, in terms of seeing uh, how many calories am I expending as is with what I'm currently doing. Um, you could start at that calorie amount, or if you wanted to make sure you're absolutely in a deficit, you could remove 250 to 500 calories and start there. There. But most of the time, uh, if somebody's not counting calories at all or tracking any kind of macronutrients, if they start at their TDE and then couple that with resistance exercise and good um, training programming, they're going to see some weight loss and fat loss pretty much immediately, uh, especially if they have not been doing either of those things very seriously beforehand. So that's step one. Um, step two is to then determine the your fat amount in terms of grams per day and your protein amount in terms of grams per day. Now, a traditional ketogenic style diet, if you Google and read about it, it will recommend consuming somewhere between 70 to 75% of your total daily calories from fat uh, and then 20 to 25% of your total daily calories um, or actually more so like 15 to 10, 20% of your total daily calories uh, from protein and then your last 5 to 10% um, of your calories from carbohydrates. Uh, so very, very high fat, fairly moderate to, you know, moderate protein, even on the low side, and then very, very ultra low carbs. With people who typically want to lose weight, right, they want to feel good about themselves, especially when they are naked. Um, they want to look like they have some tone um, or leanness to them, which really is just some code words for they want to have some muscular build uh, that makes them look athletic and you know ripped when they're lean. You need to have muscle to have that look. So what I like folks to do, especially when they're uh, a lot of their training is resistance or weight training based is to actually have a little bit of a higher um, protein content. So my preferred form of a higher fat, moderate protein keto style diet, diet would be something more along the lines of having, let's say, 50% um, uh, fat. 40% protein, and then 10% carbs. Um, I like this for a couple reasons. Again, number one, I feel like it's going to facilitate muscle recovery and muscle growth, even when we're in a deficit, I'm much much more effectively uh, than having such a smaller amount of protein, like 20% in a normal keto diet. Um, I like it for that reason. I like it for the fact that anytime we eat protein, um, it you know the thermo thermic effect of food in terms of how many calories we burn, it does rise. Uh, it's a little bit higher with protein than it is other macronutrients. Um, from my understanding, um, it's also a little bit more satiating too. Um, I feel like the, you know, 40% of protein, which is definitely a decent amount each day with the 50% of fat, which is definitely a lot each day. Those two macronutrients can help us feel very full and satiated. Plus it, those types of food groupings and, um, dishes you can make out of that kind of breakdown uh, between fat and protein can be very palatable. So if our food tastes good and it helps us feel full, we're more likely going to um, adhere to the diet program, which is what we obviously want to see long-term and good results. 
Um, so that's what I recommend. Uh, and you'll see some of that similarly um, out online, uh, especially when it comes to resistance training people. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't do any kind of weight training, you don't really care about maintaining any muscle tissue, I would argue that you should. Uh, but if you don't, then trying a regular keto style diet with the higher fat in that 70 75% range and that protein then in that 15 to 20% range and then carbohydrates at 5 to 10 Give it a shot, see how it works for you. Uh, that would be totally fine. Um, and the last thing to determine then, after you have your macro percentage breakdown, is to possibly toy with having every one to two, maybe up to three weeks, having a a carbohydrate or a refeed style day. This is primarily just for the psychological rest of the diet. Carbs taste good. People like carbohydrate hydrate foods. I find if somebody allows himself one day every 10 to 14 or up to 21 days, three weeks, where they go and just enjoy um, a day of good foods that they enjoy that are carbohydrate-based and um, kind of just satisfy, satisfy some cravings, um, that it does them a lot of good psychologically, that it helps them um, – remain on the diet in the long term. They get a little bit, they get a day of some higher calories, which you know, it's gonna help them feel full, it's gonna refill their glycogen, they might have better workouts um, the couple days following. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily gonna help you burn fat any faster. I mean, some people would say, oh, well, your leptin will increase because you have such a high increase of calories and carbs. Yeah, research really shows that you need to overfeed on calories period for a solid three to five days before leptin increases rise. I definitely wouldn't recommend that, but that might, might be something worthwhile throwing in. So these are my thoughts on setting up a ketogenic style diet um, uh, for weight loss and muscle retention, even a little bit of muscle growth. Uh, if you're a fit, active person looking to lose a little bit of weight and retain the muscle that you have or even build a little bit. So let me know what you think. Comment below. Um, reach out if you want to talk further about this. My email is trainwithcole117 at gmail.com. Be happy to chat with you about it. Thanks.